even though I might be a bit late on this one, I wanted to still make sure I got it out there because I've already done one for Letterkenny, and this is the first official spin-off to that series following the character Shorzy, who's also played by uh, Jared Kiso. This is um, co-produced, co-written, co-created by Jared Kiso following the story of Shorzy as he leaves the town of Letterkenny and instead goes to the town of Sudbury where he goes and continues to play hockey with, you know, a funny team of wild characters. Of course, it has its own little setup for all these characters, but there is a vast difference between what the characters on Letterkenny bring to the table to what the characters of Shorzy brings to the table. And the first thing I want to say is right off the bat is there's only six episodes of this so far. It just ran through its first season in May I know the trailer for the newest season of Letterkenny has already dropped. I think they're up to season 13 right now, I want to say. They have t- they have the specials. Don't count. Maybe it's season 11, actually. It's definitely more than 10. I know for a fact it's more than 10. So I'm going to say, with that trailer dropping, it's also making me realize that they've been working on Letterkenny. Which is why we haven't heard anything about Shorzy yet, and I hope we do, because Shorzy is just this fantastic new take on maybe the same things like what they're doing with Letterkenny, only it feels a little more sophisticated. It feels like there's a little bit more effort, almost, into the story they're trying to tell here. Now... First, I want to just give a quick synopsis of what the story that happens over the course of the six episodes are of this first season, and then I want to explain what I believe its inspiration comes from, because I don't think a lot of people, I don't think it's really said out loud, but I'm going to say that there's probably a huge um, actual story in history that this derives a lot of its uh, sort of storytelling elements from I guess you can say I'm not going to say it's a direct sort of what they decided to do with this story sort of thing but it is closely related to it I know they've said that the 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 main inspiration behind this show was the movie uh, Slapshot from the 70s I don't know if the movie Slapshot is also um, somewhat correlated to the actual story that I know to, to sort of feel like what this is coming from all i know is that there is a deeper or even a more an even cooler i guess you can say an even vastly more awesome idea that i want to say shorzy derives from so shorzy basically follows this pattern of the character shorzy leaving letter kenny we're now discovering more about his character so it goes into his family it goes into this new team he's on and it goes to him trying to like build up this team to make them better because they're no longer in uh, like like college uh, hockey or high school hockey. They're now in what's considered AAA ice hockey. And he's part of a team called the Sudbury Bulldogs. And what the Sudbury Bulldogs is trying to do is they're trying to not, you know, continue their losing streak. We kick off the show where they're at like the, their 20th loss and they're about to fold. And he's like, I'm going to change this team up and we're just going to never lose again once we get this new team. So he brings us this new he brings in this new team and it's all these interesting new characters it decided to um get involved as characters that are just meant for this show. It's very minimal carryover from Letterkenny, but it still definitely has its callbacks to Letterkenny. So there's uh Ted Hitchcock, which the the storyline for him is that you know, they call him Hitch because his full name is Ted Hitchcock. And if you say it real fast, it sounds like 10 inch cock. Of course, that's a hilarious line that they would make for this genre of what they're doing. This kind of this this dry comedy that's just nothing but puns and really quick wits about it. It's just really, really great. So uh, you got Ted, you got Dolo, you got Sanguinette, who winds up being the new captain. Uh, they're all owned by this uh, this lady, Nat, who kind of runs the, the Bulldogs team, while also being this, like, known, 
character around town who has a lot of weight and a lot of the, you know, it, it's still that small rural town concept, even though Sudbury is meant to be vastly a lot bigger than what Letterkenny is. So the story is that he gets these new team members and they're trying to win the last few games so they can make it to like third place um, or they try to make it to win exactly. And they're going through the process of understanding what they have to do. So they bring in a bunch of heavy hitters and they're and they're hitting um, they're hitting hard. They're trying to like make it known that they're not to be messed with now. And they win one game by points. They win a second game by technicality. And they win a third game by just total, like, abuse. And then there's a fourth game against this team that's really well known as being the, the toughest team in their league, in the AAA Hockey League. And they um, go up against them and sort of lose. But the whole purpose of it was not just to lose... In, for the purpose of the game, but to also beat them sort of mentally. So the whole game is just them totally beating the crap out of dudes, getting penalties, knocking people out, and just making it known that we might lose on the points, but we're going to make sure your guys go home and need to go to the hospital. So that's essentially a quick synopsis of what the season is giving you. And it's just that fun journey of going through all of these characters, all of these storylines, these games, dancing around the new ideas that they're making with new character development. That's definitely vastly different than how they do character development for Letterkenny. I want to say Letterkenny is very much, you know, when you see Shorzy, Letterkenny is definitely the Hicks. And Shorzy is a little bit more, again, in my mind, sophisticated. It's just the the writing just seems like it's on a different level almost simply because I think they wanted to step away from it just being about, you know, the jokes they do that involves these, say, lower to middle class people. And now we're dealing with, you know, these are actual hockey players. You know, we have to take this seriously. It kind of goes, goes through a lot of those little story points of showing and expressing what it's like being on like a traveling or even a, a very current and successful hockey team you know you got hockey players that are bunking together uh, hockey players that do you know they do a lot together they're always there they got each other's backs and this is what it kind of in this is what this whole season and this show kind of envelopes in itself and again, i think it's very much more sophisticated than what letter kenny is and i'll say that a million times during this whole entry but what i want to get into is actually Despite what they say, the inspiration being Slapshot, and I don't know what the actual in, like inspiration for Slapshot is. I just know that I know of that movie. I've never seen that movie. There's another story that I think this is very much more correlated to than whatever story is happening in the movie Slapshot. If you have never heard of them, there is a Philadelphia hockey team. It was the Philadelphia Flyers. During the 70s, I want to say it was, the mid-70s, the Philadelphia Flyers had this kind of nickname to themselves where they were called the Broad Street Bullies. The Broad Street Bullies, even though it was this, you know, NHL, like, hockey team that was created, the Flyers were losing. Like, they were losing bad during that time frame. So what they decided to do was they decided to just have fun while they get out there. And if they were going to do anything, they were just going to beat and brutalize whoever got on the on, on the ice with them. So it was kind of during that era where there's this there's this really old joke that's where, oh, I went to a fight and a hockey game broke out. That's that's a joke that correlates to this era. And the Philadelphia Flyers or the Broad Street Bullies were a big part of that sort of that, that story where that story derives from. Because all it is is just these these big dudes that didn't necessarily, necessarily care about hockey. They just cared about beating the crap out of the members of the other team. And that's where they get this name from. Now, there's a documentary that came out for it um, maybe a decade ago, something around like 2010 or 2011. I have been interested in seeing that, but the only reason I know what the Broad Street Bully storyline is is, of course, because of the Joe Rogan podcast and the and the episode with Rob Zombie. Rob Zombie was originally trying to make a live-action movie that was meant to tell this story because it would be 
a portrayal very closely related to what Shorzy is. Shorzy, from everything I heard from how Rob Zombie explains it and from anything I read about who the Broad Street Bullies are, Shorzy is this story. I don't know if a lot of people really have made that connection because maybe that not that many people even know who the Broad Street Bullies are or that this was a, a very closely related actual real-life story or real-life events that happened in the 70s in Philadelphia. I haven't seen any interviews where anybody goes on and says, you know, yeah, we know who the Broad Street Bullies are. You would think, you know, it's hockey. It's still all hockey. But the fact that it's this story that's real, it's this story that takes place in history that you can look up, and when you read it, and I encourage you, go read about the Broad Street Bullies, because if anything of what Rob Zombie has said is true, and anything about what I'm reading, it's just this, it's one of those really bizarre stories that you kind of, <laughs> you kind of wish, like, drunk history would pick it up and make an episode on it, because it feels like it would be so good as a movie, and the closest thing that I think ever has happened is this Broad Street Bullies documentary, maybe Slapshot, if it is based around that in any way, I don't know. But Shorzy is the closest thing, and after, I'm, I'm going to be honest, after maybe my fourth watch of the season, because they're short, they're like 20, 30 minute episodes, so watching like four of them is the equivalent of a Marvel movie. Watching all six of them is the equivalent of this of the Schneider Cut, maybe a little bit less, so it's not that difficult to watch the entire season. And I watched the entire season maybe four times over the course of a month, just letting it play in the background, because that's how much I loved it. I really loved this first season. And the more I watched it, the more I was like realizing how the elements of that story, the story that Shorzy is telling, is very much related to what I heard in this podcast. And then I went digging for it, and I saw this whole article about the Broad Tree Bullies, and I saw the film that was created, and I saw the book that Rob Zombie was talking about, because he had correlated this idea around a book that was about this. It was this telling, this almost retelling of all of the events that kind of led up to them being this, you know, historical team in NHL history. And even they had a bunch of members who were, had all these quirky names, like what they have in Shorzy. Like in Shorzy, it's, it's Shorzy, it's Dolo, it's Hitch. The Philadelphia Flyers had a Duke, they had an Otto, they had a Hound. They, they, had a, they, had, they just had a guy whose nickname was O or Zero. I'm not sure how he would pronounce it, but I've, I've seen it. I saw the dude. Orest Kinderkruck, I think is how his name was, and they called him O. That's, you know, they had a guy named Big Bird, they had a guy named The Hammer. It's all just sort of correlated. It's, it, it all seems to, like, be the same story just told in modern times with these other characters, to me at least. I don't know if anybody else has made that correlation, but I know I did. And it definitely makes me just love this story even more. And it ended on a note that it wasn't just meant to be a one-off, so they are 100% making a second season. And I just can't wait to see what it is they're going to do. And I really look forward to them maybe doing more of that. You know, Letterkenny's a great show. I did a whole entry about Letterkenny. But Shorzy is a great show that really does pay tribute to who these ca who these guys are. All the people that created Letterkenny all have a role in Shorzy. You know, Jared Kesso, uh, Jacob Tierney. They all, these are the guys that write and direct Letterkenny. And they have this second show that's just another triumph to their writing. And I want to know if they're ever going to do more because I'm going to be there to watch it. If they made just four more spinoffs of whoever the fuck they wanted, I would totally watch it. And I want this second season of Shorzy, and I can't wait till season 11 or 12, whichever one is coming out of Letterkenny, which is dropping soon, I believe. Um, but yeah, go look up the Broad Street Bullies, watch Shorzy, check out this storyline, Ch check out that podcast episode uh, with Rob Zombie, and get up to the point where they're talking about the movies he wishes he did. Because he talks about the Broad Street Bullies, and he talks about something that has to do with Groucho Marx. And that's why it's stuck in my head, because I remember the Groucho Marx part. Because that was a real big deal to me, because I'm a big Marx Brothers fan. And every time I think about the Marx Brothers one, I remember, oh, he also talks about the Broad Street Bullies. And this is how my brain sort of works. So you kind of get an idea of where my brain goes when it comes to how I come up with thoughts and how I'm able to lead my way down to things. My brain is is like its own Sherlock Holmes, but it's like a Sherlock Holmes that like 
doesn't really like do anything else except if it's it has to be brought to its attention and then it figures it out. You can't just go and figure it out on its own. I wish I could figure out a way how to harness my brain strength to find these connections when I needed to, but it just does it on its own sometimes. <laughs>